Hamburger menus are everywhere. They're a very popular way of handling navigation on small screens. But do you know how to build one from scratch? Because there's a lot that you need to consider. You have to make sure that your animation doesn't suck, that the menu looks good on different devices, and that it's accessible on screen readers and keyboards. So in this video, I'll show you how to build a hamburger menu that elegantly changes to top navigation links on desktop, all with just one set of HTML markup. Sound good? Let's get into it. Here's our Cats in Space website. We have a header with an H1 tag, and then the main content of the website. We're going to create our top navigation, which will be a row of links on desktop, and the hamburger menu for mobile. So first, we need to create the markup in our header using correct semantic tags. Since we're creating navigation links, we'll use a nav tag, and since they're technically a list, we'll put them in an unordered list. And for maximum efficiency, we're going to use the same markup for both desktop and mobile versions of the navigation. And we'll use Flexbox to keep the H1 tag on the left and the top nav links on the right. And let's also get rid of the default bullet points and list styles. And use Flexbox again to lay out the links in one row. So this is good for the desktop version of the layout. Now let's build the hamburger menu for mobile. The menu will contain all the top nav links. And I'm going to move the links into a div so that we can hide and show them. In our styles, we want to target mobile viewport widths. I'm targeting 40 EMs and less, which is equal to 640 pixels. So let's give the menu a background color to set it apart from the rest of the website. And make sure that the menu is always in the same position in the viewport with position fixed. And add a little breathing room. And for mobile, we want the links to go vertically by changing the flex direction to column for mobile. The other thing that menu needs is a close button. Since this is an interactive element, we should create it as an HTML button so that keyboards and screen readers can press it. So in the button, we'll load an SVG image with a blank alt attribute so screen readers will ignore it and set the width and height so the browser knows its aspect ratio. Let's remove the default styles from all buttons in the top nav, removing that gray background and the border and that little bit of padding. Let's also make the SVG image bigger so it has a bigger click target. And align it to the right side by adding an auto margin on the left. And let's add some bottom margin to move the links down. OK, this is what we want the hamburger menu to look like when it's open. Initially, I'd like the menu to be off screen to the right, so let's set translate to 100 VW horizontally. And let's add a transition so that when it moves on and off screen, it'll be nicely animated. And we'll see this in action a little bit later on. Now let's add our open button in the nav tag, but before the top nav menu so that it's always visible. And we also want to hide both the open and close buttons for devices larger than mobile. All right, so we have the basic style set for the hamburger menu. Next, we're going to be adding some functionality so that the open and close buttons show and hide the menu. And in order to do that, we're going to leverage some accessibility features. Specifically, we'll be adding some ARIA roles and attributes for screen readers, but we're also going to be able to target some of those attributes in our styles. To do this, we'll add an ARIA role to the top nav menu of Dialog. A dialog indicates that it contains additional content on the website that you can access by interacting with a control. In addition to hamburger menus, other examples of dialogues are accordions and modal or pop-up windows. The other part of the dialog is the element that controls whether the dialog's content is expanded or hidden. In our case, we want the open button to control the top nav menu dialog. We can accomplish this by adding an initial state of aria expanded false to the button, indicating that the menu is closed or hidden. Later on, we'll use JavaScript to change aria expanded to true to indicate that the menu is open. In order to give screen readers context for these two parts of the dialog, we need to give them a label. I'd like to label both with the name navigation. Since they're going to be sharing the same label, I can create a hidden span with a value of navigation. And then I can use that ID to label both the open button and the menu. Now in our styles, we're going to target the open button's aria expanded state as a selector, meaning when the menu is open. The top nav menu is the next sibling element of the top nav open button, so we're going to target it that way. So when the button is clicked, 
will bring the top nav menu back on screen by changing it from translate 100 VW to translate zero. Now we need to use JavaScript to change the ARIA expanded state so that these styles take effect. First, let's add the open functionality. In our HTML, I'll add an ID to the open button that we can target in JavaScript. Then in our script.js file, we'll load the open button as a constant and create a function to put in everything that happens when we open the menu. Right now, we just want to change aria expanded on the open button from false to true. And let's run that function when the open button is clicked. On our website, keep an eye on the aria expanded attribute. If I click the hamburger button, the aria expanded state changes to true and the menu is opened. Now let's add the close functionality. In the markup, let's add an ID to the top nav close button and also add an aria label. Instead of using aria labeled by, we can also use aria label to only label the button itself. In our JavaScript, we'll treat the close button similarly to the open button, creating a new constant for it then a new function for everything that happens to close the menu. And in it, we'll set the aria expanded attribute of the open button back to false since the menu content is now getting hidden. And let's add an event listener to run that function when the close button is clicked. Now on our website, clicking the hamburger button opens the menu and clicking the close button closes it. So the basic functionality of the hamburger menu now works visually. However, we also need to hide and show the top nav menu from screen readers and keyboards in the same way so they can't access the menu when it's closed. We can do this by using an HTML attribute called inert, which makes the element inaccessible from screen readers and keyboards and also makes it unclickable. So I want to quickly mention that I am by no means an accessibility expert. A lot of the things that I'm mentioning in this video are actually things that I've learned from a course called Practical Accessibility by Sarah Soydan. This is not sponsored at all. I just highly recommend her course, and I've learned a lot as a web developer trying to get better at accessibility. So if you're like me and this is an area you're trying to improve at, um, I highly recommend her course, and I've linked it down below. All right, so all that said, in our JavaScript, we want to add the inert attribute to the top nav menu to initially hide it from the accessibility tools, but only if the website is loaded on mobile. We can use the window match media method to target that same 40 EM viewport width that we've been using in our styles and saving it as a new constant. Now let's create a new function with a parameter. We'll use the media match result as the parameter. So if the current device matches that media query condition of less than 40 EMs, the matches property will return true, meaning that the website is getting loaded on mobile. Otherwise, we can assume it is on tablet or desktop. And then let's run the function once on page load. Now on mobile, we want to change the top nav menu and add the inert attribute. And on desktop, just to be safe, we should do the opposite and remove the inert attribute in case the user moves from a mobile viewport to a larger one. So now if we reload the website on mobile, the top nav menu has the inert attribute. And if we change it to tablet and reload, it doesn't have it anymore. Now we also want to take into account cases where the user changes from a mobile to a desktop viewport or vice versa. We can do this by adding an event listener on the media constant so that anytime the media query condition changes from true to false or vice versa, it will fire. Then we'll run the setup top nav function again. This is super handy because this means that anytime the viewport changes and crosses that 40 EM breakpoint mark, this event will fire. We also want to remove the inner attribute when the menu is opened and add it back when it is closed and hidden. So now on mobile, the top nav menu is initially inert. Then when we click the hamburger button, the menu opens and the inert attribute is removed, allowing us to click on menu elements like clicking to close the menu. Now you may have noticed that when we go from larger viewports to mobile, the menu suddenly appears and moves off screen. On desktop, the menu is visible and it gets hidden from mobile with the translate of 100 VW. But because we have a half second transition duration time, the animation runs when we hit that breakpoint. So since this is a little annoying, let's fix this by adding an inline style to cancel out the transition. Then when the hamburger button is clicked, removing that inline style so that the sliding animation works. 
Then when the mobile menu is closed, we want to cancel out the transition again, but after a timeout delay of 500 milliseconds, so that it happens only after the sliding animation is complete. And now, when we go from mobile to the larger viewports and then back again, the menu doesn't randomly appear. All right, so far when the menu's closed, it is not visible and we've made it inert so it's inaccessible from screen readers and keyboards. Then when the menu's open, visually it covers the whole viewport, blocking the user from the rest of the website. So for screen readers and keyboards, we also need to make the rest of the website outside of the navigation inert. To achieve this for screen readers and keyboards, we can load the main tag as a constant, and then when the menu is opened, add an inert attribute to it. Then when the menu is closed, we'll do the reverse and remove the inert attribute. So now on the website, when the menu is opened, an inert attribute gets added on the main tag, and then it gets removed when the menu is closed. Another thing we can do is to lock scrolling on the body so that when the menu is open, the users can't accidentally scroll to another part of the site. The best solution that I've found for this is to use a package like Body Scroll Lock Upgrade. You can do it yourself, but it's honestly kind of hard to make it work on all devices and browsers. Sometimes it's just easier to use an existing tool. To use it, let's load the script in our index.html file. I'm using the vanilla JavaScript script, but they also have versions for Angular and React. Then we want to load the element we want to lock scrolling on, in this case, the body tag. Then when we open the menu, we'll lock scrolling, and then unlock it when we close the menu. And while we're here, let's also automatically close the menu if it's open while we switch from mobile to desktop. Now when we open the menu, the overflow on the body tag is hidden, and we can't scroll down anymore. And a nice feature to add for keyboard users would be that when the keyboard opens the menu, to immediately focus on the close button so the user doesn't have to tab to it but can close the menu right away. And similarly, when the keyboard is used to close the menu, we'll put focus on the open button again. This makes interacting and navigating the hamburger menu more intuitive for keyboard users. And then for users who don't want to see motion-based animations, we can replace the sliding animation of the menu with a fade in and fade out transition. For the top nav menu, we'll add another media query targeting mobile widths and prefers reduced motion. In it, we'll cancel out the translate and have the menu initially have an opacity of zero, and then we'll set opacity as the transition property. Then when the menu is open, we'll add another prefers reduced motion media query and change the opacity of the top nav menu to one. So now if I turn off animations in my Windows settings, on the website, the menu will fade in when we open and fade out when we close it. All right, so that's how you can build an animated hamburger menu that is also accessible. Links to my source code on GitHub, Sarah's accessibility course that I mentioned, and other resources are all linked down below. Also, if you like my hoodie, my coffee mug, or my mouse pad, you can get these and more from my new merch store at coder-coder.com slash merch, also linked below.